Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we'll finally be able to take a look at my Home Assistant Yellow POE Edition. As always, we'll take a look around the box, we'll unbox the unit and we'll take a closer look at the unit itself. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's affiliate links in the video description to a bunch of home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past and other ways to support the channel, like supporting the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. Those affiliate links and the Buy Me A Coffee link are also all on my website, www.hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So mid last year, Nabu Casa, the makers of Home Assistant, announced Home Assistant Yellow. They actually announced Home Assistant Amber, but over the course of development, the name changed to Yellow. It's a hardware project that runs Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi compute module like this one. And it has some extra features built into the unit itself, like a Zigbee and thread bridge, similar to the previously reviewed Home Assistant Sky Connect. It has an NVMe slot for either storage expansion or installation of a Google Coral machine learning accelerator card, a uh, future episode if I can manage to get my hands on one, uh, and some other features that we'll look at as we go through. Now I was interested of course, but I didn't order one straight away because it's 125 US dollars for the POE edition, and that's without the Raspberry Pi compute module. I did wait a little while, but eventually I couldn't resist and I pulled the trigger and here it is. Now in the last video, I showed you how to prepare a Raspberry Pi compute module four for use with the Home Assistant Yellow. And in the next one, I'll show you the far, far easier way to do it. So if you're following along at home, you might wanna take a look at either of those videos uh, and then come back to this one. Now, the Home Assistant Yellow did have some hardware delays due to the global silicon shortages, but they finally started shipping to customers in late 2022, and I received mine at the beginning of March this year. Now, on top of the delays for getting the Home Assistant Yellow in, uh, I also had a really hard time getting my hands on Compute Module 4s, also because of the silicon shortage. That said, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have made assurances uh, that they will be ramping up production and solving a lot of those supply chain issues over the course of this year. I did unfortunately have to hold off making this video until I had a Compute Module 4 in hand uh, so that my Home Assistant Yellow would actually have a brain and be able to do something. Now that it's here though, let's take a look around the very sparse box. On the top, we've got Home Assistant Yellow, the Home Assistant logo powered by Raspberry Pi. On the front and back, we've just got a Nabu Casa logo. Uh, and lastly, on the bottom, we've got powered by a worldwide community of tinkerers and DIY enthusiasts, Nabu Casa Yellow Kit POE, Home Assistant Yellow Kit with power over ethernet, there's only one in the box, unfortunately, I couldn't get more than one, uh, and made in the People's Republic of China. Uh, so there's really not a whole lot to discuss around the outside of the box. It's very similar to the Home Assistant Sky Connect that we reviewed previously. So with that out of the way, let's open up the box and take a look at what's inside. Uh, so uh, I will just run a blade under this sticker on the front edge here. Uh, and we'll pull this flap out and pull the front edge of the box out and open up like so. We have some Home Assistant stickers here. That's quite nice. Got the Home Assistant Yellow Kit Edition and there's a setup guide QR code. For more information and setup instructions, visit yellow.homeassistant.io. And there's nothing on the back of that. Uh, and then we have the unit itself. So I will pull that out 
Uh, it's got this kind of nice translucent uh, acrylic case and you can see the connections on the back there. We've got a blue button, there's a red button, uh, there's what appears to be a 3.5 millimeter output jack, two uh, regular old uh, USB type A ports, a USB type C port, uh, an ethernet port and a uh, DC 12 volt port. Uh, on the bottom, open source home automation that puts local control and privacy first, powered by a worldwide community of tinkerers and DIY enthusiasts, uh, made in PRC. Uh, it takes 12 volts at two amps on the DC jack there. Uh, it's the yellow kit PoE, the PoE plus 48 volts at 0.6 amps, 802.3 AF or AT and uh, there's a serial number there and some other bits powered by Raspberry Pi, Nabucasa logo. I'll pop that aside for now and I will uh, take this cardboard out and inside here uh, we've got a heat sink and some mounting screws for our uh, compute module. So that's quite nice that they include the heat sink and the thermal pads that we need. Uh, and it comes with a really good quality uh, shielded uh, power over ethernet cable. So that's nice. Uh, and we've got some warranty and safety information there as well. I'll move all of the packaging out of the way and we'll take a closer look at the unit itself. Uh, so the outside of the box isn't much to look at uh, and that's by design, but if I release these four thumb screws on the bottom, should be able to Yeah, so we can turn it over, lift up and back with the top edge. Uh, and we now have access to the main board itself. So it's a little bit more interesting now that we are inside the unit. Uh, so uh, we saw on the back, we've got our 12 volts. Uh, we've got our ethernet port there, our two USBs, USB type C uh, and the USB type C uh, appears to have uh, this jumper here is for UART or USB uh, and uh, there's the PoE plus indicator there and this transformer here is taking care of the 48 volts and turning that into the 5 volts that's needed to run the Raspberry Pi and the rest of the circuitry on here got a CR2032 uh, Duracell battery in here and I'm going to make an assumption that that is running a real-time clock uh, and uh, there's another jumper here I'm not sure so CLS3 and CLS4 uh, and it's set to CLS3 I, I'm not really sure what that does I'll need to look up the manual for that uh, and we can see this is where our Raspberry Pi CM4 gets mounted and I will uh, grab that and we'll mount that on there now. And that is installed. Uh, so now we have our Raspberry Pi compute module 4 uh, and we've got this expansion port here for the M.2. So we can plug in an NVMe SSD uh, to boost the amount of storage we've got here. The other thing you might be able to see here, and it's actually a whole lot tinier than I actually ever thought that it was going to be. Uh, this is our Silicon Labs radio. And this Silicon Labs radio uh, is both Zigbee and thread capable and with a future update to home assistant uh, this will also support matter so uh, the home assistant yellow can in fact be its own thread border router uh, so i'll pop this back onto the base plate here uh, and uh, with the compute module 4 installed uh, i should I really should install the uh, heat sink uh, and the screws to hold everything down, uh, but I'm just going to leave that off for now because what I want to do, I'm just going to quickly pop the cover back on. 
I won't put the thumb screws in to hold it down, uh, but what I will do is plug it in and we will uh, see what it looks like. So uh, on the side here, we've got a red and green LED here and it's now flashing that green LED. So what we should see in a moment is this machine starting up and I'll head over and I'll open up LandScan here. I'm just gonna run LandScan and I'm gonna search for Raspberry or will I search for Home Assistant? I'll leave it at home and I'll just run this scan a few times and see if it pops up. So there we go, we've got homeassistant.local and it's on 192.168.1.170. I'll copy that IP address and we'll head back over to our edge and I'll paste that IP address in here and we'll hit enter. I forgot to put in 8123 on the end, so we'll do that and we'll see we've got Home Assistant. Uh, and because this is the same compute module that I used in the Raspberry Pi IO board, uh, it's pretty much ready to actually go through and set up. So that's it, the, the compute module for running in the Home Assistant yellow. Now I won't go through the Home Assistant setup, that is a topic for the Getting Started series and I've done that video at least three times, so check out those for that process. This particular Home Assistant yellow is going to be replacing my primary Home Assistant server here, my production server, freeing up one of my Raspberry Pi 4s for some other projects. So as we go through setting up some new things in that production setup, we'll film anything that's noteworthy and bring you along for the ride. So that's the Home Assistant yellow. I've had it out of the box for all of about 15 minutes and I'm already really, really happy with it. I think this is going to be a perfect replacement for my existing Raspberry Pi 4 setup. I love the expandability of the NVMe slot and I'm deciding whether that's going to be a Coral Accelerator or a larger storage drive. With the built-in thread and Zigbee connectivity, it means I'm not going to need to use a USB stick like I currently do to add that functionality, which is awesome. And there's a Matter software update, as I mentioned, due out any day now if it's not already out by the time this video drops. It is not all sunshine and rainbows though. As the Home Assistant Yellow itself doesn't have Bluetooth on board and without the wireless module in the Compute Module 4 that I have installed here, I don't have Bluetooth functionality without then getting some kind of Bluetooth expansion like a USB to Bluetooth adapter. Unfortunately, the wireless free version of the Compute Module 4 was all I could get hold of at the time that I ordered them. Uh, but I do have some more on order with the wireless modules, so we'll see if and when they arrive. That said, I'm not really using Bluetooth functionality that much as is, uh, though I am planning to do some experiments with Bluetooth proxies in a future video, and Bluetooth proxies might actually solve half of my problem here. Let me know what you think about the Home Assistant Yellow in the comments section down below. That's all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with a home automation idea you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing that now. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified when I release new videos each week. If you like what I do here and you want help to support the channel, there's some affiliate links in the video description and other ways that you can support the channel, like my Buy Me A Coffee link. Contributions you make through Buy Me A Coffee get used to make more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. And those affiliate links and the link to Buy Me A Coffee are also on my website, www.hivemindautomation.com.au. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.